Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm going to call the meeting to order. And my name is uh, Luis Perez Pedia. I serve as chair of the Historic Districts Commission in Concord. Welcome to the October 6, 2022 meeting of the Town of Concord Historic Districts Commission. The commission will review two new applications this evening and at the end will conduct other businesses. We're conducting this meeting as a hybrid session in accordance with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. The public can attend this meeting in person and may access this call through both telephone and video conferencing. Members of the public will have an opportunity to ask questions and provide public comment on applications and discussions following the petitioner's presentations and questions from the commission. To do so, please raise your hand and you will be called to speak. Those attending remotely, please use the raise your hand in the participants function of the Zoom meeting platform. If you're calling in and cannot use the platform, you may raise your hand by dialing star nine. Our host will mute microphones of those not speaking to preserve bandwidth and may need to turn off video, except for the commissioners, the host and the current applicant. I will call each commissioner for comments on an application and then open the meeting for public comment. Once there are no more public comments, I will ask for a motion from the commission to continue, to approve, to approve with conditions or to reject. A second and then conduct a roll call vote. Once the commission has acted on an application, the applicant is free to leave the meeting. We will do a roll call of members of the commission. Uh, Kate Chartaner, I understand, will be absent. Dennis Fiore will be absent. Abigail Flanagan. Present. Uh, Catherine Mass will be absent. Henry Moss. Present. Peter Nobley. Here. Uh, Melinda Shonway, is she here? She's not here. Paul Ware. Present, yes, here. And I am present. So let me do another, another roll call because I was counting on Melinda. <laughs> okay, we're, we're missing, um, if Abigail is going to recuse herself, we only have four members. Is Melinda confirming that, it's, did she confirm that she was coming? She did say she would attend. Okay, so uh, should should we proceed with the uh, application for uh, 286 Barrett Mills Road before we consider um, 363? Because we need one more commissioner in order to, to do that. I think we may need yeah. Are we in agreement? Yes. I think okay. that would be the right thing to do. All right. So our apologies for having to change the order. Is uh, are you representing uh 286 Pirates Mill Road? No, 51 Walden. 51 Walden. I, I, I think, think Barrett so Mill is on Zoom with us. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, but there's there were no continuances in the yes, there are. Oh, well then. Yeah. Uh, extension of time. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, no, continue. Extension, yes. Oh, okay, so, okay, can I have a copy of the, of the, yes, of the, the, the agenda? Because I have, may have printed the wrong one. Then. Okay, this is what I had, I'm sorry. Under okay, another business. Okay, that should, if it was a continuous, it had been under continuous. So you like that. Sorry, you're correct. Okay. So we're going to go entirely out of order here. We're going to start with the other business, and we're going to first consider a certificate certificate extension to 50 Wall, 51 Walden Street. The certificate of approval, uh, year uh, 21, number 66. Uh, do we have that application? Can we put it? Okay. Okay. This application was, uh, a, well, the reason for the extension, the contract administration was concerned that there is not enough power to the building to run the ventilation air conditioning system if all the theatrical lights are, 
are on as well. We have delayed several months trying to set the information on increasing amperage to the building versus replacing or retrofitting theatrical lights to LEDs instead. Okay, is there are there any implications with uh, what was approved in terms of LEDs and theatrical lights, or is that that is inside, right? So it doesn't apply to the outside of the building, right? That's right. These... Okay, so it would not be in our preview anyway. So, so um, you have anything that you want to add to explain this continuous other than what? You know, our project was approved by this commission, yeah. And then at the eleventh hour, the contractors electrician was concerned about the amount of power to 51 Walden, which is a town owned building. Right. And so I attempted to reach out to various departments of the town to find out if we can increase the amperage to the building from 400 to 500. Whose permission do I need? There's a transformer sitting out in the, the path outside the building. It bounced around for weeks and weeks mm -hmm. between the town facilities manager and CMLP. And I finally got through to Carrie LaFleur um, last week and we did meet. And um, the issue there is that with this approved plan for ventilation and air conditioning, if all of the theatrical lights are on at the same time, there is a question of- It's an overload. Uh, yes. Uh, however, um, another path is available, and that is to replace the ancient theatrical lights, which are incandescent, with LEDs, LEDs yeah. that have a lot more um, power and less energy. They're, they're more efficient. More efficient. Also, you can, rather than getting out a ladder to get up and change the focus, you, you know, they're remotely controlled. You can zap a color. There's a lot of things. So, we're trying to find out from the town. We want to compare the two paths. Mm -hmm. um, it, if the town will approve the increase in amperage, that's one way to go. But it seems like it's in everybody's interest to go on path two, which is to LEDs purchase or retrofit to LEDs. Okay. And I apologize that I hadn't noticed the date of the expiration of this. Uh, we were in the midst of. Uh, trying to figure out from the electrician mm -hmm. how much uh, power would be required. So we um, just last week did finally make a connection with uh, Carrie LaFleur and also Dave Woods from CMLP. They may be able to assist with, um, there are rebates for commercial customers mm -hmm. for LEDs. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we feel like we're heading in that direction. What What is the time span that you think that you need uh, to have the application continued? You see, I, I'm saying this strictly for administrative reasons, so we can put a reasonable time. Or should yeah. we just continue for three more years after the... Um, and, usually an application is valid for three years. Oh, well, we should be able to do it. Yeah, you should start the work within six months of the of the application, but then the application is valid for three years. Okay. In other words, you have three years to to complete it. Okay. So if that's the case, do you need a continuance or? Well, it, this your approval expired in May. As as long as it as the project was not started, is the project has not been started. No, it has not. Okay, then then it, uh, uh, we have purview to, to extend the application. Oh, sure. So I think that in oh, this case, we'll, so, so, uh, let, we'll, we'll go in, in order. So I, I'm going to open the discussion in terms of uh, uh, starting a new period by which the project, the work is started within six months and then there's three years to continue. So I'm gonna ask the commissioner for comments and I'm gonna start with uh, Abigail. I have no objection to a continuance. Of the, uh, of Henry? Uh, I would continue it. Thank you. P uh, Peter? Uh, same, please continue it, yeah. Paul? I agree. And I agree as well. So are there any public comments? 
And I, I just want to ask, is that six months from when it expired in May or six months from tonight? Ah, thank you. Uh, all right, if there are no public comments and uh, we already explained, made some explanations from the applicant, I'm gonna ask the commission for a motion uh, in regards to continuing the certificate or for an extension of the, of the certificate of appropriateness of 51 Walden Street. So moved. Seconds? Second. Abigail? Aye. Henry? Aye. Peter? Aye. Paul? Aye. And I'm an I as well. So you are all set. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You are most welcome. <laughs> Uh, so we would like to uh, see uh, what about 286 Barrett's Mill Road? Is the applicant here? Or? Uh, yes. Here. Oh, okay. All right. I again apologize no problem, no. because we we need and if you can in, in the background try to find um, uh, Melissa. I, I, I emailed Melissa okay. and all right. Emailed um, Catherine as well and see if she can come after all. Yeah, exactly. Well, that that's very good. Thank you. All right. So the next application to be uh, considered it's uh, uh, Stephen and Heather Pedret, 26 Barrett Mill Road, uh, in the Barrett Farm Historic District to reconfigure front and side yards at fire pillstone walls, walkways, steppers, and terraces. Reconfigure the driveway and arrival court, construct a masonry grill and vegetable garden, remove shell, shed, install pool, and construct pool cabana and install landscaped lightning. All right, uh, Mr. Ferdet, as you. <laughs> Actually, my name is Dan Gordon. I'm a landscape architect, and I'm here on behalf of Heather and Steve Ferdet this evening. Perfect. So I am going to make the presentation. Um, it sounded like a lot of work. It's a land, primarily a landscape project. Some of it's visible. We put everything out there and we'll review it all with you. And uh, we also have Colby um, here from uh, Patrick Ahern's office. So we're doing a pool in the back with a pool house. And so Colby's going to give the presentation on the architectural piece. I'm going to just do the overview and then I'll let Colby do the architectural piece. We also have Patrick Taylor from my office here. And Patrick is just listening in. He knows more about the submission than I do. So there's technical things that come up. He might be able to help me out on that. I'm gonna share my screen if I may, and we'll get started. Um, can you see my screen? Yep. Okay. Yep. So this is just the application. I'm just gonna review the application materials unless um, you would prefer to operate it on your end. I'll, I'll, this is just the materials that were submitted to the commission to date. So this was the application identifying that there's some new construction, the pool and the, the pool house. There's a little bit of demolition. There's an old skating shed back there that the pool house will basically um, replace. Um, there's some other landscape features that are gonna be uh, renovated. So it's that's the work. And there was a description uh, that you've already read um, it basically includes building a wall along the street that's going to be in the character of um, a um, New England field stone wall, match like adjacent walls in the neighborhood. We're going to redo um, a little bit of the, the paving at the front walk and a, and a walkway to the mudroom door. The driveway is basically going to be replaced in, in its exact location, same material. And then the rest of the improvements are all in the back there. And again, primarily it's the pool and pool house that is way back and a little bit of terrace work that's um, uh, not really visible from the right of way, but we'll, we'll review all that with you. So that, that's the scope of the project that's identified here. And moving to the presentation, this is the overall property. It's a really lovely property with um, a stream that, that borders one side. There's a, a skating pond that had been man-made many years ago. Uh, it looks very natural today. Um, here you have um, Barrett's Mill Road. Um, the driveway comes in. There's the house, the terraces in the back, the uh, 
old shed, the uh, um, skating uh, hut is back here, which is where the pool house will be and the pool will, will come in here uh, just in front of it. So that's kind of the lay of the land. Um, these are all keyed, but I'm gonna show you a few photographs um, starting with the existing conditions. So this is the project site with the driveway coming in. Uh, here you're looking straight into the property. So if you could see all the way back in here, you might see the pool because it would be all the way back um, along back here. Um, this is looking again, now we've done a little pa panorama. Now you're looking. So the we're gonna, we propose to remove this large Norway maple that's producing a lot of shade in front of the house. The pine will be retained. The cercis, uh, the Eastern red bud here would be retained and a wall would be built, a field stone wall would be built along the property um, line here. These are just some more views. This is why we're trying to, we're take, proposing to take this out because it really obscures the, um, the house, lovely house and, and produces a lot of shade here. Um, this is if you walked down beyond the house and you're kind of looking in and you can see the little play structure in the background. We actually took this through the Conservation Commission and in this area, it's where the wetlands begin. We're proposing to do, add some plantings right in here. So I don't know if this view will even exist in the, you know, after we do that planting, but that's the view today. Um, now here's a drone view gives you, we're gonna replace this brick walkway with some bluestone. We're adding a bluestone walk, connecting the drop off here to the mudroom. This is the way the house lays out inside. The mudroom is actually the entry and they have, um, they don't really use the front door, but we are, there'll be a front walk uh, that we are proposing. So there will be a nice presentation of, of to the house. So this is removed and replaced with a, a wall, new walkway. And here in the back, which I'm not convinced that you actually see, we're taking out all of this decking and we're just extending the terrace to, to come out a little bit further about to where this wall is and to come where the, the decking is and then to just step down to natural grade and remove this and add a landing. So we're kind of cleaning up an existing condition and simplifying the materials. Uh, the garden would be located centered off the back of the barn here. And then as we look around, um, the, the, um, the pool house would be located in, in the background here. It's a little bit obscured by this tree that's in leaf. Uh, this is the existing skating shed and this is the location where the pool house would be. And that's the existing uh, conditions. So we just kind of walked all the way around through here with the, the views of the terrace, the pool, the uh, skating shed, the, the panoramas along the street. Um, and this is the proposed plan. This is a key plan. It identifies the items I just mentioned. A little bit more detail, the, uh, the front walk, the wall along the street. I'm gonna to go to one more blow up here. You see it a little bit better. The wall along the street, the new bluestone front walk, the, the walk coming into the house, steppers to the, um, there's actually existing paving here to the mudroom, but making the connection, uh, retaining some cobble and adding to it at the garage, uh, mosaic stepping stones that bring you around garden, terrace, stepping stone path that brings to a mosaic pool terrace, the pool and the pool house. And here we see the lighting is all indicated. Looks like a lot of lighting. All the lighting is dark sky compliant. All the lights are, the, are, are basically path lights with the exception of a few step lights, which so the, the A's, the orange are, are path lights. I'll show you the cuts on these in a minute. The B's are, are step lights. There's a few steps that bring you down from the terrace down to grid, uh, a, a one at the, at the front walk, two at the front walk. Uh, and then there's some in-ground path lights. So these are lights that are actually flush with the lawn. Um, and then the last one is, is we are proposing one 
post light at the arrival, it would be a traditional kind of lantern fixture. The light, the luminaire is tucked up into a copper top. So it, it's, it is dark sky compliant. Um, those, I'm gonna hop over to the lighting cuts. This is the path light. And I believe this is one of the lights that you identify as, um, it's, it's on your short list of, of path lights. Um, so that's the path light. And there's a picture of it after it's patinaed here. Let's see what we can get to it. Um, there it is when it's all weathered, it just kind of blends. And then we have, um, this is the wall light. We would use a bronze. And again, it's a, just a little down light, all full cut off. And that would also weather to a patinaed neutral color. And then the last light is the last, well, there's two. There's, um, this uh, hunt, um, that's where it, when it's weathered, that's the step light. Um, and then there's this light here. And again, this is bronze and it weathers. And this is a path light that you can use in a lawn situation. So the path from the terrace out to the pool, a uh, couple lights, and it just looks like this, very low profile. It just washes about you know six feet in front of the, uh, in, in front of the walkway. And then the last light is this um, uh, lantern post light. And um, again, this would be a, a solid copper top and the luminaire would be up in the top for full dark sky compliance. And it would be on a, a post, a chamfered, a tapered post. So that's what we're showing there. Um, These are the materials and I'm gonna, they're all keyed, but I'm gonna just go through them. I think they'll be self-explanatory. We've touched on all the landscape improvements already. And so I am gonna go back to this. And here we have the proposed bluestone walkways, natural cleft material. This is the front walk. We might do a little, a little motif in, at the front door for that. Um, again, this would be the, the bluestone paving at the rear terrace, the stepping stones, the mosaic stepping stones with grass joints. Uh, here's the mosaic paving at the pool. Again, just natural cleft bluestone, natural stone material. This is the existing condition where we have a chip seal that's been swept, cobblestone. This is just what we're gonna be replacing. So it should look just like this. Um, here we're seeing cobblestone and chip seal, uh, which we have at the, uh, the barn doors. And then the wall would match. This is a wall just a few doors down, dry field stone wall, um, you know, agri kind of ag vernacular. Um, and, and then that's at the street. When we're at the terrace, because it's a, really a retaining wall, We'll probably tighten up the joints. And I don't think this is even visible from the public way, but it might be a little bit tighter like this wall here. A little bit more structural um, in its capacity than the loose field stone wall of the street. So those, oh, and then the fencing weathered red, Western red cedar uh, around the garden. So that is the, um, the landscape presentation. And I'm, unless I'm happy to take any questions you have now, or I can pass it over to Colby to present the architecture. Why don't you pass it over to Colby? Uh, and then after you have made the whole presentation, then we'll ask the commissioners for comments. Very good. Thank you. Colby? Thank you so much, Dan. Thank you, Chairperson. And uh, thanks for hearing us tonight. Um, I will actually share my screen just so I can present the architecture side of things here. Let's see. Doing this correct. Right. Is everybody able to see the, the drawings here? I can see it. Great. Uh, so as, as Dan had alluded to earlier, uh, the cabana that we're proposing here uh, is really um, kind of replacing uh, an existing skating shed that's been there uh, on the property and is kind of falling slightly into disrepair, but um, not really fulfilling the needs of the clients right now. Um, so we've developed a scheme that really, uh, you know, started with this concept of 
the, the kind of New England vernacular um, uh, sugar shack or maple syrup shack. And uh, it developed into a, kind of a warming hut with, um, you know, slash cabana because we're still using it as that skating shed. Um, and it, you know, it'll have the, the traditional wood fired, uh, uh, wood fireplace inside. Um, and the exterior imagery is really something that fits in with that kind of vernacular I spoke of, um, you know, Western red cedar, board and batten siding uh, to weather natural. So even if it is slightly visible from the street right now, um, it's going to start to blend as it become as it weathers to gray. Um, into that landscape in the background and feel like it's it's something that has been there forever. And, um, you know, the, the design is really intended to mimic something that could have been there for a long, long time, um, mimicking that sugar shack style that we see, you know, in the area uh, quite a bit. And, um, you know, it, it has a, the, the roof is a standing seam metal roof. Uh, and a gray color that will also start to blend in, but is still of the, the vernacular. And um, the, the real goal is to feel like this was kind of brought back to life and we've given it a second, a second life since uh, its origin as a sugar shack. And now it's, it's acting for this family as a pool cabana and skating shed. So here are the, the elevations uh, that we've come to. And uh, it's really, really set deep into the property um, and, and truly only visible from uh, what we've seen as, as one location that Dan had, had pointed out from, I think it was location five in his plans. Um, so I think that's, you know, with that, we can, we'd be happy to speak to some of the materials even further, but I think that uh, that wraps up our, our presentation tonight. Thank you so much. Right. Very good. Thank you very much. Um, well, I'm going to ask the commissioners for comments, and um, I think that we should all be looking forward to Henry's comments. So I'm going to start with Henry. I thought it was very thorough, and my only and very well done. My only question is that um, the photograph after completion of the cabana has a monitor uh, on the roof. And I'm assuming that that's a picture that doesn't represent what will be done, uh, but that the elevations show what is proposed. That's correct. The, uh, that's just an imagery photo of a recently finished project with similar um, finishes that we wanted to allude to. That's what I thought. No, Thank you. I have no further comment. I think it's going to be great. Uh, thank you, uh, Henry. Uh, Peter. Uh, I agree with Henry. I think it's a it's a lovely design. I, I mean, you can barely see it from the public way, and I, I can only imagine it's going to improve the property. So I would just say, well done. Uh, thank you, Peter. Uh, Abigail. Um, I agree with Peter and Henry. The one question I had is, how are you fencing the pool? So. The pool um, under current, um, I don't know if you've been following the pool regulations, but the auto cover, pool doesn't have a fence. The auto cover with a self, a, a locking keyed auto cover, a safety cover, complies with code now. So- That's great, that was my question, because I didn't see a yeah. pool cover there and I thought you're, you're missing a pretty substantial fence. <laughs> yeah, so, so this is a change that happened um, over the last couple of years. And the, the state code, which is the governing code, now complies, re references the national code, which says that that auto cover, if it's a locking safety cover, can, meets the pool enclosure requirements. If a town has a bylaw, then that would be in excess of the town, the, the state code, and we would provide pool, additional pool enclosure to meet that bylaw. But it, we've checked and, and Concord currently doesn't have any additional um, Full enclosure requirements. Okay, great. Um, yeah, no, I have no objection to the project. I think um, uh, I think it's appropriate per our guidelines. I would request that you would submit um, for each light fixture, each type of light fixture, um, just the the kelvins and lumens that are being installed, so that those fall within our guidelines. So the we're we yes we will. 
Yeah, can, just, can, just so that that's noted, because there's usually a couple, either a couple Kelvin, options. We're, we're going with about 2000, which is a, it, it's that warm kind of um, yeah. halogen light. And then the lumens, I know you have a, a cap at 430, I believe, and we will. Yeah, and we prefer, you know, we prefer it obviously under the under that. Yeah. Um, so if you can just note um, in the final what, for each fixture, what you've selected, that'd be great. We'll, we'll, we'll follow up with that material. And then I, I have no other comments. Uh, thank you, Abigail. Uh, uh, Paul. I, I have no comments. All right. And uh, uh, Catherine, it's now with us. If you want to make a comment, I don't know if you were able to hear the first part of the presentation. Um, yes, I, I apologize. Boston traffic caused me some uh, delays tonight. And um, I so I am late to the dance here, but I did review this application um, prior to our meeting and um, did have the benefit of, of seeing the images. And um, I'm completely supportive of the project. I don't have anything further to add to my colleagues' comments. I think it's a great project. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Catherine. Uh, I have a couple of questions in regards to the uh, removing the maple tree on the front. Does that tree come under the purview of the tree commission or anything like that? And It does, it does. yes. OK. And we, we have a, um, a petition in and we'll see what the outcome of that is. Okay, and and you will have alternative plans in case that uh, the the tree commission uh, it decides that it needs to stay. <laughs> if if we if it is not approved for removal, it will remain. Yeah. Okay. All right. And the other thing is that uh, you talk about the chip seal. Is the chip seal a new uh, structure, or is just a replacement in kind of the chip seal that currently exists? It's um, replacement in kind. I mean, there's a little bit, a very small change in the driveway, but not not much. All right. Uh, very good. Uh, I will open now uh, the meeting for public comments about the application of um, uh, uh, 286 Pirates Mill Road. Okay. Doesn't seem that there are any public comments. Are there any public comments? All right. Hi. So, Excuse me. Oh, I have there my, is a. I have my hand raised. Okay. We we could not. Oh, I'm sorry. We, we apologize. We we somehow we did not see you in the. Oh, no problem. <laughs> no problem. My name is Nancy Frisella Lee. I live at one forty Walton Street. Um, and sorry, I'm I, I'm just hearing this tonight for the first time. I um, logged on because I saw that this was on Barrett's Mill Road, and I recently did a little study of Barrett's Mill Road for the Scenic Roads Bylaw Project. Um, so I don't know if that tree that you're talking about, I haven't because I just saw it tonight. I haven't been able to drive by the property to to, to look at that what the tree is and what all the walls where are the walls will go the new walls, but um, I don't know. I think that you should make sure that the you're covered under the the new scenic roads bylaw that actually hasn't come into effect so um you might not have to even worry about that um and the other thing is are you guys going to do a site visit um because this is, seems like there you know even though you're all seems to be satisfied with the presentation um barrett's mill road is one of our most historic roads in the town and anytime that you're adding lights and a pool you're saying that it's not very visible from the uh, public way, but I think it warrants, since it's such a major uh, project, there's a building going up and a pool and lights that you should do a site visit, especially since some of your members aren't there, just to make sure that you're really covering the ground. So I would hate to, you know, the lights look lovely, but um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a historic district. And I think that you really need to look at those. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Ms. Priscilla. Um, I didn't make any comments before, uh, but the comment that I was going to make was that I want to poll the commission precisely on one of the issues that uh, was brought in the public comment, which is that, uh, uh, first of all, I agree that the problem, the project seems to be very uh, uh, appropriate, uh, but I believe that it would be appropriate as well to have a site visit, and I will poll the commission on that subject right now. Uh, Peter. 
Um, boy, I could kind of go either way. I think the, the, the one alternative would be to ask for a nighttime rendering, which we've done with uh, other design teams. Um, so I'm sort of on the fence myself. Okay, so uh, we'll uh, do it as, as a matter of opinion. <laughs> uh, I'm a Henry. hard maybe. <laughs> a hard maybe. Uh, Henry. Well, I think the scenic roads issues are significant. Um, they're adding a stone wall rather than removing one. And I think the scale of the Norway maple makes the discussion uh, worth developing. And one thing that is worth knowing is whether that tree is on the, um, on the owner's property or on the town property. And if it's on the owner's property, the scenic roads element is a matter of uh, visual continuity and not anything legal. Uh, I, my guess is Mr. Gordon knows where the tree is. There's also a cost, I believe, which is far too low. Uh, there's a penalty for removing trees that are larger than six inches, maybe, something like that. So it's a discussion which you have probably already developed thoroughly. I am not worried about what you see from Barrett's Mill Road in terms of uh, the site plan, particularly for what's in the back of the site. Therefore, I don't think a site visit is necessary, even though I think it's a really important site. Uh, all right, uh, Catherine, uh, should we have a site visit? <laughs> um, I, I personally um, would agree with Henry. I think that um, we have enough information here and um, you know, I don't believe what the aspects that are gonna be visible and public facing um, are visually going to be obtrusive enough to, to um, merit a, a big question or concern, um, but I'm, I'm certainly open to a site visit if, uh, if others feel like that, that would be helpful. Uh, thank you, Catherine. Abigail. Um, I don't think a site visit is necessary, but as with all applications, I drive by during the day, I drive by at night, um, so I've already looked at the site, um, which is part of my standard procedure when we're considering any new application. Um, I also think if this structure, the proposed structure and pool were, were much closer to the road, this would be a very different discussion, um, but given how far set back it is, um, the other structures in place, the, the siting um, in total, I, I don't have concerns about it. Um, so uh, I don't think a site visit is necessary um, and I'm ready to proceed with the application this evening. Uh, thank you, Abigail. Uh, Paul. I, I agree with Abby. I, I, I think the question is what would we learn from a site visit? And I think the answer is very little, very little that's relevant to the decision we, we be asking to, we are being asked to make, uh, particularly because a lot of this work is going to be behind the existing home and the rest of it is flush to the ground. So I, I think site visits ought to be meaningful and this one would not be. So I oppose the site visit. Uh, uh, thank you, Paul. Um, I will uh, say that uh, I am on the fence like Peter, but I think that I have been uh, persuaded by my fellow commissioners that a site visit is not uh, necessary. So uh, we have, uh, um, I think that Melinda has now joined us. So I don't uh, know if she has any comments uh, about this not. application. No you comments. Do not. No. no comments. All right. So uh, again, as, as we have, uh, the applicant has presented the application. Uh, the commissioners have made comments. We have addressed the issue of a site visit, and we have heard uh, the public comments, then I will ask the commission for a motion uh, to continue to approve, to approve with conditions, or to reject the application of a 286 Barrett's Mill Road. Uh, I can make a motion that we approve the application uh, for 286 Barrett's Mill Road to reconfigure the front and side yards and add fieldstone walls, walkways, 
steppers and terraces, reconfigure driveway and arrival court, construct a masonry grill and vegetable garden, remove a shed and install a, a pool and construct oh. a pool cabana, including oh, landscape that, lighting. I'm not gonna go for a site visit. I can't believe oh, it. Somebody uh, is uh, not muted. Uh -oh. um, it's me. And I'd like to add that uh, Abigail has requested for the uh, lumens, uh, the configuration of the light fixtures. We just like to have that as a follow up and that the design team review the scenic roads bylaw to uh, see if anything um, we don't know about is um, affected by this application. Second. All right, then I'm gonna uh, ask the voting members of the commission to uh, take a vote. So I'll start with Paul. Hi. Uh, Melinda. Aye. Peter. Aye. Abigail. Aye. And I am an aye as well. So the motion is approved. And thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you very much. And thank you for the your public service. Thank you. All right. Now we are going to consider the application of Kevin O'Brien, 363 Main Street, to construct a new screen porch. And I understand that uh, Abigail has uh, requested to uh, uh, be excused from this discussion as she is a neighbor or an abutter. Uh, so I will appoint uh, uh, Henry Moss uh, to be a voting member for this application. Um, uh, Mr. O'Brien, you're here. If you, yes. if the, the floor is yours. Okay. <laughs> right here. <laughs> it's a little confusing. <laughs> Where should we look? It's not there. Where are you? <laughs> well, we're looking at the same screen. So, <laughs> thank you all for considering us tonight. All right. You want to present very quickly what is your plan? Yeah, could you, yes, if you could pull up our plans. Thank you. Excellent. Yeah, if we could just zoom out on it so you can see the page, if possible, that would be great. Yeah. That's perfect. That's that's great. Um, so this house uh, we've we've presented to you all before and we're we're back again. We're beginning uh, beginning construction on the the project that was approved last winter, um, and in addition to that, we are uh, proposing adding a screened in porch. There's if you look at the top plan, the existing building um, is the existing original house has sort of a a little ramble of additions that have been kind of cobbled together in the back, and they have been completely re renovated over the years to become what they currently are, which is a large mud room a small powder room, a closet, and then two porches, a, a covered porch out to the driveway and a covered porch out to the neighbor. Uh, what we're proposing to do is keeping on that original foundation, um, reorienting a kitchen in that central space and enclosing this, uh, the small side, closing the small side porch to have become a, a little mud room. Um, and these, those two areas are outside of this, Committee. This committee determined they're not in their purview, but we are at, we are proposing um, a 10 by 14 foot screened in porch. Um, you see that the arrow right to it. Um, we just sort of overlaid it onto the existing elevation. 
Um, and then in the, there is an elevation of that porch. You'll see that's the side elevation you're looking at from Main Street right now. Um, I did also uh, include some photograph. Okay, that's that one's that one's good. If you could zoom out on that one as well. I don't know if it's just zoomed in this big on ours or if everyone's seeing it that way, but. Uh, so just this, the area with the white arrow on the, in the middle is the existing, um, the existing structure that we are removing and building on the foundation. Uh, and the port, if you look at the, the elevation of the exterior existing, the left-hand side of that uh, projecting addition is where the screen porch will be located. And so from the from the neighbor side, the ele the visual or the visible elevation from the street at all is that bottom left most uh, right. Yeah, d there's a photograph of the existing with the door and the wooden stairs leading down and right next to it is the elevation of the screen porch that would face the neighbors. Um, and what we've done is we've obviously this house has great original details on the front part of the house. And what we're doing is you'll see in the, the freezes below the screen panels, we're, re, we're taking the same B group detail that's under all the bay windows in the house. Uh, the balustrade is echoing the existing railings on both the front and the side porches um, and all materials, all trim details, bracketing corbels, all of that are taken from the house existing uh, being reproduced. And I, I were you able to get the photographs that I sent today? I went by today to try and try and save a potential site visit uh, by I put some stakes in the ground that mark the existing uh, or the outermost limits of the proposed porch, and they were kind of difficult to see. So I added those arrows. The roof line will match the existing additions roof line, uh, so our height will remain the same, it ends up being, I think right now it's about 10 and a half feet off grade and it will stay the same in the new addition. And if you could, yeah, the next one shows, this is taken from on the property, right at that little fence, um, but I thought it showed a little bit better than the one, the one above is from the public sidewalk. If you zoom out, you can kind of, oh, actually no, I zoomed in the photo. <laughs> Um, like like I said, all materials are, are we're reproducing what's on the original part of the house, not what is currently on these additions. Um, and you know, windows, everything will match the rest of the house. And I think that's that's, that's the, my presentation. <laughs> well, th thank you very much. So I'm gonna start with uh, uh, Peter uh, comments. Uh, I have uh, no real substantive comments. I think the design is is uh, very nice. Uh, I think in this case, given how close it is to the street, we probably do want to do a site visit um, just because uh, it is visible from the street. Um, I, can I ask, is, is there lighting inside the screen porch? There will be two recessed lights and a ceiling fan. Okay, so I think we should walk the site together and look at it in context. Um, the flags otherwise... are there and will be there. So I gave him okay. a fresh coat of pink spray paint today. Very nice. <laughs> uh, but otherwise, I have uh, I have no objections. Uh, thank you, Peter. Uh, Henry, comments. I also think it's uh, it's well put together. The reason I think a site visit might be helpful is that I'm not convinced that the balustrade around the roof is necessary um they are typically really short-lived physical phenomena they they have a tendency to fail much faster than most other exposed parts of the buildings um and i think it will also maybe attract more attention to the screened porch than uh, otherwise would be there so that, that's my only question, which, which is, would it, in fact, perhaps be better visually from the street and as an, from the point of view of the owner over time to 
omit that balustrade at the roof. Uh, thank you, Henry. Uh, Melinda. I agree with Henry. I, um, I think that uh, the balustrade probably isn't an asset in this. I love the idea of the porch. I think it's great. I think it adds a lot to the house um, and to the owners, but um, I'm not sure you need anything on top of that roof. And I look forward to um, taking a look in person. Uh, thank you, uh, Melinda. Uh, Catherine. Um, I agree with Henry and Melinda. I think that um, we should take take a careful look and sort of consider um, that element on the roof. And um, I do agree, though. I think, you know, in essence, the screen porch will be um, ultimately a great improvement to to that rear elevation. And um, I do think it's going to be very helpful to see everything in context with the site visit. That's all I have to add. Thank you very much, Catherine. Uh, Paul. I uh, agree with others, um, but somebody refreshed me on the balustrade. Is that that at the moment that's been approved for the main house in no, any that's, event? No, sorry. Or is that, that, that is only a, or is this, that only a function of the that's only a function of the proposed porch? That's correct. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think, um, anyway, I think a site visit is appropriate and we can discuss it more then. Uh, thank you, Paul. Uh, I echo the comments of my fellow commissioners and therefore I will open the, the, the meeting for public comment. Any public comments? Do we have any raised hands? So in the absence of a public uh, comment, I will ask the commission for a vote with the understanding that there seems to be consensus that we should continue this application with a site visit that would uh, uh, occur on October 20th. Is that okay? So anytime is fine. At eight in the morning usually? Anytime is great. So I will ask uh, the commission to, for a motion to continue the application of uh, 363 Main Street. So moved to the October 20th uh, uh, site, 8, 8 a.m. site visit and uh, meeting at 7 o'clock. Seconds? Wait, you just said you just said 8 o'clock and he just said 7 o'clock? No, no, 8 o'clock. 8 a.m. and then the 7 p.m. Then you can oh, come sorry, back. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Either one's fine, but I just want to make sure we're all at the same time. Okay. Uh, then, Second. Uh, your second, perfect. All right, uh, Catherine. Hi. Uh, Peter. Hi. Melinda. Hi. Paul. Hi. Uh, and I am a, I am an I as well. And did I poll everybody? Did I really vote? All the voting members voted. Yes, they did. Perfect. All right. So okay. we will see you in two weeks at, at eight, eight in the morning. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for your okay. time. Very good. Well, thank you very much for your presentation. All right. So we're doing good right. timing. So, so we're going to move to. We're going to move to. Sorry. Oh, there's an oh, echo. There's a... All right, we already address issue number one of the other business. Um, there's a request by the Historical Commission for a letter uh, to support an application that uh, they had made to the Community Preservation Commission, right? Mm -hmm. Committee to fund a historic preservation plan. I did send a copy of the application they are making. They are asking for $25,000 or $50,000, $50,000 uh, to basically do a study uh, to further the historic interests uh, of the town. I personally believe that this is uh, entirely appropriate and that we should support it, but I look forward to comments from all commission members 
uh, about uh, supporting uh, this um, uh, funding application. Uh, I think it's a I think it's a, a worth doing. So I would say it is a, a good uh, use of uh, CPC money. I couldn't tell if it's a matching grant or not. I that's the part I couldn't quite understand. But but in any case, the CPC has funds for this kind of project. So I say yes, we should support it. I, I think that Anne has been involved, I believe, with that application, so maybe she has the answer. <laughs> right. We'll be applying to the uh, State Historical Commission um, for matching funds for 25, and so if those funds do come through, then we would return um, 25 back to the town of Concord. Great. Thank you, Anne. You're uh, thank you, Peter. Uh, Henry? I was very pleased to read that proposal because it made me aware, even though I think I've studied a lot, of how little I actually grasp of what the town of Concord uses as a framework for these decisions, apart from references to guidelines that have to do with uniqueness and historic. Uh, oh. What I wondered is whether they're actually trying to get back to Ann Forbes's original survey and update that if that's a primary uh, interest that that um, Melissa and her group used to galvanize themselves. Does anyone know? Well, um, <laughs> Melissa met with the, the State Historical Commission and they said that the survey um, really is just a survey um, and what we need perhaps is a, more of a plan um, so the, the thought isn't to update the survey, it's really to create a plan and maybe a recommendation that the plan will be certain areas where the survey should focus. Um, but I know that the other sort of priority for the commission is um, creating um, or making uh, historic resources more available to people, in, including historic maps and um, just letting people know where they can find out more information. Well, I was also intrigued by the fact that they used the Linux example with its um, table of contents as the kind of thing that the MHC is really looking for. And there was no sustainability component at all in the Linux piece. And I do think that, the, that we should be able to pro at least help homeowners and building owners um, find guide, guidance for upgrading the energy performance of their historic buildings in ways that don't compromise the buildings. So yes, I do think we should uh, back this proposal. And I do think that the Historical Commission should stay in touch with us over issues that it might need to engage. Uh, thank you, Henry. I'm going to go around the screen, so I'm going to ask Catherine for her comments. Um, I, too, am entirely supportive of this. Um, I think uh, it just occurred to me that I was I was also very encouraged and happy in, in reading this um, in terms of the objective that, you know, it would definitely sort of continue the history of the preservation efforts and um, just the dedication to our town um, to keep the historic character intact. So um, I'm very supportive. Uh, thank you, Catherine. Uh, Melinda. Honestly, I can't imagine why we wouldn't support this. <laughs> There's no distinct <laughs> with what we're, our, our dues are here on this committee as well. So um, I think it's a go. Thank you, Melinda. Paul? Yeah, I, I was wondering whether uh, we have any specific uh, liaison role with the um, Historical Commission with respect to this. In other words, we're always talking about the importance of coordination, which is seems in general to be uh, well-intentioned, but often uh, highly imperfect as between the two entities. 
isn't this something in which we really should have a, a designated representative working with them so that we we understand this better and we understand the focus of it and we understand how to interpret whatever the results are none of which has anything to do with whether or not broadly i would support this i mean i i see no reason not to support it but i wonder whether we have an opportunity here to forge a closer alliance of a more formal nature with the historical commission uh, thank you paul um i'm going to check whether abigail is uh with us it looks like she is no longer in the meeting. Uh, I will make a, a few comments. I think that overall the purpose of the application is uh, very worthwhile and I would support it. And I am happy that Paul brought uh, the issue of the collaboration with the Historical Commission, because uh, you you are aware that uh, during, at the beginning of the year and through the year actually, uh, Dennis Fiore and I have had a number of uh, of our meetings with the historical commission in order to find a, a formal relationship to say so. And uh, I think that this is the typical example where that formal relationship would be very useful. Uh, the, the issue that we have not figured out yet, it's uh, how to implement it. Uh, one uh, thought I had was to name a member of the historical commission as a permanent observer uh, in the, the historic districts commission. So they would have like an official role where they could comment on, on all applications, et cetera, et cetera. That would be akin to the designated person from the select board, which uh, re lately has not been coming to our meetings, but in general, we usually had somebody from, from the select board attending our meetings. So I'm open to, to any suggestions or discussions in terms of formalizing our relationship with the historic commission. And uh, I will mention that uh, the way that uh, these uh, requests came about was by a letter sent uh, from chair to chair, from the chair of the historic commission to the chair of the historic district commission, meaning me. Um, so I don't know if that's a, 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 a uh, practical conduit or whether we should have a member of our commission uh, sort of having uh, a reciprocal role and sitting in the meetings of the historic commission and i'm open to to all kinds of suggestions keep in mind that i understand that we all agree that we should support this uh, application and that i will be uh, sending a draft in the next few days uh, for everybody to to have a say on on the content so Paul, I don't know if you think what would be the good way to 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 uh, engage the historic commission. <laughs> well, I I think your thought of having a a representative of the HDC attend their meetings and be an informal. I mean, obviously not a participant in their meetings in a in a legal sense. But uh, to use your word, an observer, I think if they were amenable to that, that would that would perform at least two functions. One, it would create a greater alliance between the two public bodies. And secondly, it would uh, keep us better informed and uh, acting more in parallel. And, so, and what would you think? Sorry, what would you think about having a, one of their members attend our meetings in the same role? Yeah, I mean, if they would do it, that would be fine. I, I wouldn't. I don't. I wouldn't have any objection to that. I mean, obviously, that's a non-voting participant, but yeah. they could do that anyway. Yeah. Um, as I suppose we can attend their meetings anyway. Any, any other um, comments or? Any other ideas about how to move this idea forward? Uh, Melinda. Yeah, I'm I'm liking that idea, Paul. I'm thinking that it's possible. Nobody really wants to probably take on an extra meeting, um, but I could see us rotating 
and sending somebody to one of these meetings um, with, to observe and then coming back and giving a short synopsis of what they discovered and heard that night um, after we've gotten done with our other business. I, th I think that would be actually a really good idea. Yeah, I think the mischief in any kind of a rotation like that is nobody really thinks it and you lack the continuity. Okay. So if it were just a rotating um, situation, I think it loses its force in that kind of thing. It just gets spread so thin that nobody has real responsibility. So, I mean, maybe it's a bad idea. I don't know. But I think um, if we had a representative there, as we've done in some other cases, and they, if they want to, had a representative at our meetings, that's obviously a good thing for both entities, it seems to me, in terms of the maintaining the historic integrity and the continuity of view as between those two entities. That seems desirable to me. That we both understand historical to mean the same thing. Yeah, my only question is who on our committee is going to be willing to, to attend all the meetings, that's all. Well, how often are those meetings? Once a month? No idea. They're once a month. I, I'm not convinced that people would have to, that the designee would have to attend all meetings, but that um, yeah. Yeah. it might, tonight's meeting, for example, might have been a good time to have had a person who'd been through this application to meet with us to answer any questions. Yeah, you are absolutely right. <laughs> All right, so I, I, I think that Paul idea of having a, a reciprocal re representation, it's very good. Uh, Maybe we can identify a member of this commission that it's willing to uh, take one evening a month, or is it morning or evenings where they meet? Evenings. One evening a month to attend the, the meetings of the historic commission. Um, we can find all kinds of uh, ingenious and inappropriate ways of uh, assigning somebody like the, the most junior member has to go and things of that sort, but that only gets done in, in residencies, in surgery and things like that. Um, so I think that uh, we, I believe that I am optimistic that we will identify a member of our commission that will be willing to, to attend the meetings. And it doesn't have to be for a whole year. It can be in, in a three or six months period for as long as we maintain a continuous presence. I think that it would be appropriate. And as a matter of fact, maybe having a rotating a roster with a, a designated a, a period like three or four months will be even better. Uh, I think that Henry is, is Henry raising his hand or is he? No, no. Okay, no, it's you have the, no. the mouse on top. <laughs> All right, so I, I think that we are safe to conclude that we should support this application and that I will send you a draft of the letter in the next few days and that uh, we will continue working for a formal uh, relationship between the historic uh, commission and the historic districts commission and that the way to implement that collaboration will be by having a reciprocal attendance to the meetings of the commission all right so the next point it's uh, other business which is minutes 818 Abigail is not here, so we. <laughs> <laughs> I read through the minutes. I think they're quite good, and I'd be happy to to approve them. All right. Any any comments about the meeting? The minutes. I read them, and I and I agree with uh, with uh, Peter. I too. I sent Thank some you. at it. Yeah. Thank you to Anne and Haley for such excellent minutes. All right, so I'm I'm going to make a, a, a I'm going to take a vote um, to approve the meetings from uh, August 18. Uh, I'll go around the screen with uh, Catherine. Aye, I approve. Melinda. 
Aye. Paul? Aye. Peter? Approved. Henry? <laughs> we don't hear you. <laughs> Did, I think your computer you say, skipped a beat there, Henry. Did you say yes, Henry? My internet connection failed. I would <laughs> say yes. <laughs> and I said yes as well. Well, not having any other issues to discuss, I will ask for a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nice okay. to see you all, though. Nice Thank to you see you all. Thank you, everyone. everyone.